Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be finishing our AI and then, no, 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 no. But for now, we're gonna finish the AI, uh, AI for now because there's quite a bit to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a new function that's basically checking, sorry about that, if we see the player or not. So we're gonna create variable C, I will do C, I will do this C player equals false. So now what we'll do is if C, uh, C player equals false, or no, sorry, if, the, if it's equal to true, then we do all this, right? Else, then we can do this, we can run the idle animation, right? All right, and then what we're gonna wanna do, obviously, is we're gonna wanna set this to true inside of the player detection. So let's make sure that it's not inside right away. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now, obviously, we want another player detection, not player detection, sorry. We want to another signal that says when the body exits, right? And this is pretty simple. We're just gonna copy paste this. We're gonna check if the body name is the player, and then we're gonna set this to false, okay? So now, if I run it, and I go into the circle, It'll start chasing me. But the moment I exit, it'll stop moving. Awesome. All right. Now, another thing we can do. No, oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Another thing we can actually do, sorry, is we're going to actually do this now. Uh, we're going to not duplicate it. We're going to actually just create another, anime, another area and call this attack range. And we're going to obviously add a collision shape. We're going to make this slightly bigger. We're going to make a new one for this. This will be a circle. This will be right around there. And what we're going to do is if the body is entered here, and we can see that it is the player, what we're actually going to do is we're going to play the attack. And so now what we should have is a very simple AI that will chase you and then not attack for some reason. <laughs> All right, let's see what's wrong. What's happening here? Ah, I see. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. I actually just didn't think of this. Um, the problem is because we are currently detecting for the player then we're also going to be checking, like we're trying to check if the body is entered for the attack range. We're also checking for the detect player at the same time, right? So we need to, we'll, I'll think of a way to counteract that. But for now, we'll actually move on and we're going to go to the, back to our player and we're gonna add a new few things. And those things, I'm actually gonna introduce a new concept actually. So. Let's go to the main folder. Let's create a new folder. We'll name this global. We're gonna to go to global and we're going to do new script. And we're going to name this game. I like to name it game. Um, but I usually do game as my main global function, uh, global script, and I'll have everything in there. So. What we're gonna have in here is we're gonna have player HP. We'll do equal 10 variable player. Let's not do speed. Um, we do MP equals like one for now. We're not gonna use it, but we're gonna use the MP. And so now what we're gonna do, because it's not global right away, it's not magically global. We have to go to project settings and we're gonna go to auto load. We're going to go to path, click the little folder right here. If we go into global, click game, open, and add, it'll add the, our script as a global scene. 
or a global script. So now if I go to player and I, hmm, let's do this. Yeah, no, let's do this. Um, if I go to world, I'm just gonna close this, this, go into our player and I add a label and I just move it up to the top of the camera and I make a built-in function. I'm gonna change this to self.text equals aim.playerhp. This isn't actually gonna work because I need to make sure I change it into a string. I always forget to do that. All right, so now if I launch it, play, now we have our 10 HP right there. What we can do actually is if the attack range is entered, then game dot player HP minus equals one. Let's see if that works right away. That does. Awesome. So now every time I enter its attack range, it's going to suck my HP essentially. Awesome. Another thing we can do is in our player, we're going to, we'll add it here. If game dot uh, player HP equals zero, self dot q free. Now I'll go back to this and I'll, I'll make it like one. Now if I play and I hit the thing, I die. And the camera goes boom as well because yeah, the camera is attached to the player and so the player disappeared. Uh, you won't worry too much about that because this is just for testing. So I'll delete that for now. You can keep it if you want, but I'm gonna delete it. All right, um, I think I'm gonna end the video here for now. Uh, if you have anything you want to add, um, I would also recommend you can try to add your attack animation for the player. You can also try to fix the slime attack animation or death animation or whatever. And next video, we'll do a few things. I'm not sure, sure what yet, but subscribe and like the video to figure out what. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time.